Rome is a city full of gorgeous open piazzas, lazy passeggiatas and people watching. There is no better place to experience that Dolce Vita lifestyle than here in Piazza Navona. Welcome back to our Guide to Rome series. I'm Tatiana from the Roman Food Tour and today we are exploring one of Rome's most beautiful piazzas. Located in the heart of Rome's historic center, it is easy to reach by foot from all of the city's major sites. Today we will start by exploring the piazza itself. Then we will head to Stadio di Domiziano to learn more about the history of the square. After that we will visit Piazza di Pasquino to see one of Rome's most curious sculptures before heading over to Pierluigi, one of the city's most prestigious restaurants for a gorgeous meal. Afterwards we will visit Supplizio for some mouth-watering street food before strolling past the church of Sant'Agostino and finally ending our day at Terrazza Borromini for a drink with a view. Before we get started, make sure to check out the links in the description box for lots more recommendations, advice and tips on navigating the Eternal City. Piazza Navona is a wide-open piazza adorned with three stunning sculptural fountains. Located in the heart of Rome's historic centre, it is easy to reach by foot from all of the city's major sites. When you arrive in this gorgeous open space, one of the first things that you'll notice is the long and oblong shape of this piazza. The square was built on the site where the 86 AD Stadium of Domitian once stood. During the height of the ancient Roman Empire, the Stadium of Domitian, or Circus Agonalis, would host athletic contests and competitions and could hold more than 20,000 spectators. For a better insight into what this space was like during ancient times, head over to Stadio di Domiziano where you can wander through the ancient ruins of Rome's first masonry built stadium. If you would like to learn more about the history of Rome from a passionate local guide, head over to our website to check out our extensive list of tours and activities that highlight the very best of what this city has to offer. Today, Piazza Navona is a beautiful open space designed for you to see and to be seen. Everything you see before us is the result of a 17th century Baroque makeover. In the very center stands a magnificent 17th century sculptural fountain by the Baroque artist Gian Lorenzo Bernini. Known as the Four River Fountain, Bernini's masterpiece features four seated male figures who each personify a river that represent the four continents that were known at the time. The River Ganges holding the oar who represents Asia. And then we have the River Nile with a veil who represents Africa. Number three, we have Rio de la Plata who represents the Americas. And then finally, follow me, on the other side we have the River Danube who represents Europe. The fountain is also surmounted by an ancient Roman copy of an Egyptian obelisk. After encircling and admiring the four rivers, take some time to explore the piazza's other two fountains, Fontana del Moro and Fontana del Nettuno, both by Giacomo della Porta, as well as the stunning facade of Palazzo Pamphili and the church of Sant'Agnese in Agone, whose well-adorned interior encapsulates the drama, the theatricality and the opulence of the Baroque. I'm about to show you something really cool, but first I have a question for you. Did you know that sculptures could talk? Just around the corner, in Piazza di Pasquino, you will find this ancient and inconspicuous sculpture. 
His name is Pasquino, and he is one of Rome's six so-called talking statues. In the past, the Romans would affix anonymous complaints and satirical comments against authorities to the basis of certain sculptures, thereby making them a kind of spokesperson for the people of Rome. And Pasquino is one of them. So although he used to be a statue that adorned the ancient stadium of Domitian, today he is the voice of the Roman people. Okay, it's the moment you've all been waiting for. Food and drink. So right now we are in Piazza di Ricci, this beautiful square over here, to enjoy a great lunch at one of Italy's most famous restaurants, which is called Pier Luigi, and it's just a five minute walk away from Piazza Navona. What I chose to go for is a typical dish of Rome, but with a modern twist. Cacio pepe with shalacchielli pasta, I think I said that right, and octopus on top. For the wait, they were kind enough to bring me a little starter on the house, which is deep fried baby octopus, and of course, accompanied by a glass of really cold, refreshing Frascati white wine. Salute. After that gorgeous plate of pasta, you must visit a place called Supplizio, which is located literally 20 seconds away from Pierluigi. We are about to try a very famous local street food style snack called the suppli, which are deep fried rice balls. And we are lucky enough to meet the famous chef called Arcangelo Dandini, who is so famous he is actually known as Loste di Roma. He has many restaurants around the city and he is nicknamed the culinary host of the city. <music> Ciao, ciao, ciao Daniela. Ciao, come va? Tutto bene? Bene, grazie. Tu come stai? Bene, grazie. Sì, sì. Benvenuto a Supplizio. Grazie, sono prontissima per provare questo supplizio migliore del mondo. Migliore del mondo, eh? Bellissimo. Vabbè, <ride> migliore di Roma sicuramente. <ride> che cosa ti faccio, ti faccio assaggiare? E facciamo il supplizio classico tipico di Roma. Lo vogliamo friggere insieme? Ti va? Ok, andiamo. Bene. Vieni. <ride> So, Arcangelo wanted to show us the classic and typical suppli of Rome. Here he explains that this street food can be thought of as the child of Sicilian arancini that arrived here in Rome and are often of this particular shape. We started by deep frying the suppli for 3 minutes at 175 degrees Celsius, making sure to keep them out of the hot oil for 1 minute of that time so that the mozzarella fior di latte on the inside can properly melt. Arcangelo then gave us a very brief history of this Roman arancino or suppli. They were brought over by Napoleon's troops at the end of the 1700s when Napoleon took control of Rome. These bowls of rice were brought over from Naples, a city that then had close ties with Sicily, and in the beginning they were usually filled with meat and were called suppris because of the gorgeous fillings hidden inside them. And then from then they became known as suppli. Over time, the suppli became more oval in shape in comparison to arancini which are more spherical and gradually the cooking techniques changed and evolved. Today's suppli are made using risotto as opposed to the boiled rice used for arancini. The result is a gorgeous and dense texture filled with meat and spices that marries well with the crunchy exterior. We let the suppli cool and sit for a few minutes. Arcangelo told us that when the suppli no longer leaves any traces of oil on the paper, you know it's been deep fried to perfection. As Arcangelo told us, it's always important to eat the deep fried foods that are not heavy. It's not easy to achieve, but when you have high quality ingredients and use the correct technique, this is the result. After lunch, head over to the church of Sant'Agostino to see a work of art by none other than Caravaggio himself, the master of drama, theatricality and chiaroscuro, which means stark contrasts between light and dark. To sample the very best food and wine that Rome has to offer, join us on one of our award-winning food and wine tours or cooking classes here in the center of Rome. There's no better way to end the day than by visiting Terrazza Borromini for a drink with a view. Enjoy a gin and tonic whilst admiring the buzzing piazza from above and marvel at the beauty of Rome's skyline. Salute! 
Let us know if you'd like to visit Piazza Navona and what you're most excited to see or do or eat here in the comment section down below. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel and don't forget to hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of our next Guide to Rome videos. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Arrivederci!